In this lecture, we are going to learn how to build a local MongoDB database. Before we jump into this video, go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited membership and get access to all of the courses we've ever created. That's over 2,000 hours of content. So join me in your terminal application, also called the command prompt on Windows or command line or shell. Here we are going to get started. We assume that you already have MongoDB installed, which is what we showed you how to do earlier in the course. Next up, we are going to start our MongoDB daemon with our alias MongoD. If you get any error message, then just read what the error message is. For example, here, I'm getting an error message that my MongoD has shut down, so I can scroll up and see what started the shutdown. Okay, looks like here we see data directory data slash db was not found. Create the missing directory. Okay, so that tells me instead of using MongoD, I can use instead my direct path here, sudo MongoD db path. So I can use my direct command of, let's see here, sudo mongod dash dash db path slash system slash volume slash data slash data slash db that is on mac on windows you can just launch your executable and there we go now our mongodb daemon is running i know it's running because it says waiting for connections at its port and i also know that it's running because here we have just a cursor and we don't see our username all right, so we have Mongo D started a Mongo daemon. We need to keep this open as long as we want to work with our local Mongo database. MongoDB will stop as soon as I close this terminal or I kill my here, my server, my daemon. I can kill the daemon by doing control C. As well, I can use kill all. I can use sudo kill all mongo d. So if you have a previous mongo daemon running and you don't even realize, it will tell you in an error message and then you can just do sudo kill all mongo d. If you have a mongo daemon running somewhere, then it will kill it. It could even be running without a terminal open. Then you just have to launch it again with mongo d. And there we go. It works. Sometimes, again, MongoD doesn't work. You have to use the full command or just try it again or read whatever error message comes up. Okay, so now we have our daemon running. I am going to open a new terminal or a new command line and I'm going to launch the Mongo shell. So here I am in a new terminal and my other terminal is still running. Here I can open the Mongo shell by using the command Mongo or launching the Mongo executable if you're on Windows and you didn't set up the Mongo environment path variable. So here we are, you can also use Mongosh as an alternative. And now here in the Mongo shell, this is where we can create our database. You can see which database you're currently at by using the command DB and hitting enter. By default, you will be on the test database. Here, the little alligator bracket, the greater than symbol, that signifies that we are in the Mongo shell. It's not part of the command. It's just there to prompt you to give a new command to the Mongo shell. To create a new database, we use the command use. This will create or switch to a database. We can create a new database, for example, called courses. I'll hit enter and we get the result switched to database courses. And if we type DB this time, we see we're no longer inside of test. We're now inside of courses. Now, what if I wanted to insert a new collection or table into my database and a new entry or row into the table? Well, to do that in Mongo, a table is called a collection and we can pass a JavaScript object as the row to a collection. To create or access a collection, we first access our database with DB, and currently we're inside of the courses database. 
After that, we can either create a collection or use an already existing one. So let's say I have my database courses and I wanted to have a table or a collection of web dev courses. Well, then I can create that just by accessing db.webdevcourses. Then I can immediately insert a new entry into this table or collection with the function insert one. So here I'm using JavaScript to access my database. Into this function insert one, we are going to pass a JavaScript object. So we use curly brackets and then inside of the object, we just pass in the properties and the values for the object. So an object is an entity of whatever you're trying to describe. This could be a person, it could be a web dev course, it could be an object, a product, and you use properties to describe the object. For example, a person might have a name, an age, as well as a birth date, an email address, and those are all properties of the person. Here, let's say we are adding a new entry of a web development course to our web dev courses table. We can give our course a name such as in single quotes here is the format for our name such as hello HTML so that is supposedly the name of a course all right so note here the format we have here inserted one with that function insert one using JavaScript the parameter of the function here is an object so the argument we're passing in is an object. In JavaScript, an object is represented as a curly bracket. And inside of that, inside of the curly brackets, you have all the properties of an object. An object can have as many properties as you'd like. OK, here I'm going to type this command, and then I'm going to hit Enter. OK, here we get this result acknowledged true and inserted ID object ID. So this means we can reference our object, our hello HTML course, via this object ID. We can try again. We can call db.webdevcourses. So we know we're inside of the courses database and now we're inside of the web dev courses collection. Here I'm going to call insert one and put in a new object here using JavaScript object notation. Then we can give this new course a different name like Hello CSS. Then I can hit enter. We get acknowledged true and inserted ID of the Hello CSS object. If you want to see all of the objects in a collection, remember an object is a row in the collection, you can call database.webdevcourses. So I'm accessing my database and I'm grabbing a table in the database. Then I can grab all of the rows in that table with the function find. So here I can press enter and this returns for me two objects. Here we get the ID of the object as well as the properties of the object. So in this case, we have two IDs and each of them has just one property name. So by default, every object or row will have an ID and as well, they'll have a name because that's the property we set for each of the objects. And that is how you can create a Mongo database and how you can also access objects in there. Even if I kill my MongoDB server, I can still relaunch it and then have access to my database today, tomorrow, whenever. And it will be access that is local here from my computer. So all of this data is only available on your computer. Then you can send it to websites. Here I can kill my Mongo shell by going to my Mongo daemon and here using control C. So here I have shut down my Mongo daemon. Here in my Mongo shell, I can hit control C as well and you get the message by. And so here we have stopped the Mongo daemon and the Mongo shell. We can restart the Mongo daemon with Mongo D. 
you may be prompted to enter your password. Now our Mongo daemon is running again, waiting for connections. And I want to show you that we still have access to our web dev courses table. I have to use Mongo to launch a Mongo shell or Mongosh as an alternative. Then here I can access DB. By default, I will be inside of test. But then we can do the same steps that we just did where we specify what is the database we want to use. We're going to use the courses database. Then we can specify that we want to see all of the rows of a table. So let's use db.webdevcourses.find. And look at that, our two objects are still in there. So this proves that the data will persist. It's not data that is one time use. Now, what if we tried to access a table that didn't exist? So how about did not exist table? Well, in that case, you'll just get nothing returned. Thanks for watching and don't forget to go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited Membership where you can get access to over 350 courses that we've created.